This is RC. It's your girl, K. Marie. K. Wilk. It's your boy, Black. It's your girl, Lady. And I'm Sir. And you're listening to 2020. 2020. 2020. 2020. 2020. 2020. 2020. 2020. 2020. 2020. Podcast. Bit. 2020. I did that one for you. Underlay, <laughs> underlay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Business Minute. I'm your boy Sir, and today I have a special guest, Miss India. Hey. Uh, uh, Blendia by India. Correct. Thank you for saying it right. Hey, I, I do my homework now. <laughs> I've done my homework. So, Miss India, uh, we've off camera uh, mm-hmm. had a long conversation. Well, not long, but a little bit of an introduction. Uh, if you could just tell our listeners what it is that you do. Um, like currently. Yeah. Okay, so I make a natural skincare line. With that line, um, I focus with a lot of people who have uh, skin allergies, like nut allergies, eczema, trivascular, and um, I really like to help people who have sensitive skin to actually be able to step outside that box. Mm -hmm. Uh, For a person like me who has sensitive skin that couldn't go to Victoria's Secret or Bath and Body Works, and all my friends around are going into these different stores and getting stuff that smells good. I'll probably try something and I'll break out in hives. Mm. So instead of doing that, I created my own. Um, outside of that, I do work two jobs. <laughs> uh, and it's sometimes it's kind of hard to balance everything. Um, but when you have a goal, you have a goal and you got to reach it. I love it. All right. So how long have you been doing Blendia? Um, so I have been making products for myself about six years now. Wow. Um, and I have been into business, this year will be three. Uh, the first year, I kind of don't count <laughs> because I was throwing it up in the air, toss it up and see if I even, even wanted to do this. Mm. But it did so well the first year, um, I continued and um, I continued and now I'm in, you know, two stores here locally and people actually know my name when I go out to events and um, it's, it's truly a blessing for somebody who didn't even think I can even be a businesswoman to actually now being a businesswoman is, is crazy. Like my mind is blown every day. And when I see people who post pictures and videos and stuff about, you know, their stretch marks being removed, or uh, I've been dealing with psoriasis under my neck for blase blase year, and your cream, you know, Hill is, is, is pretty much helping my psoriasis. You have, uh, yeah, I just gotta, <laughs> love gotta love it, gotta love outdoors. But, um, <laughs> And uh, also, when you have a uh, certain, oh, they can look at me, lose my track of mind. So we're good. And when you have okay. people with kids and everything, and, and their mother is like, and as, as much uh, as much medication anymore to help control, uh, you know, certain areas or certain skin irritation, it's pretty pretty cool to actually see all this in front of my own eyes. And it's like, man, I made that. Like, I did that for somebody else. You know, it's it's it's, it's kind of mind blowing if, if you think about it. You know, yeah, leaving your print with someone and uh, making a difference for them. Yeah, and not even that. It's just seeing people post stuff, you know, on my social media and everything, and uh, it just make me it makes me work harder. Mm-hmm. It makes me because it's like man, they really appreciate what I'm doing. And it's like, man, they actually gave me a chance. When they gave me that chance, it's actually working out for them in their favor. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's mind-blowing. Every time I post a picture or something, it's like, even with people with their hair, because I, I started making hair products, like a few hair products. Mm-hmm. And um, even with people with, you know, loose natural hair, and they're showing me their curl definition, it's like, wow, like I made that from scratch. Because I make every single thing out of scratch. Wow. So I have to sit down, revamp recipes, stuff all the time and when I see people it's like posting pictures of that it's like wow like that's crazy my mind is blown every single time <laughs> every single time that's awesome that's awesome now like I said before you and I kind of touched on topics a little bit before in just in our conversation mm-hmm. 
but just for the sake of the interview, if you could repeat, like, what, what inspired you initially to start? Um, okay, so my mom, my, my aunt, uh, like I said before, I was making products for myself before I made products for anybody. And uh, they was like, man, you need to go out there and uh, try selling these products. Like, your stuff is better than what you think it is. Right. And I was like, man, my stuff ain't good. You know, like, it's, it's all right. Like, it makes me happy, makes y'all happy. And my mom and my aunt, they'll go out and tell all their coworkers at work, and then I'm making baskets for these people. Wow. And then once I make baskets for these people, and then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give it a try. So that's why I said my first year, I kind of don't count. But the first year I went and I went to a whole bunch of stores and I was like, I'm gonna try to get my stuff in a store. It's not a boutique. Mm. So within the first year, I got my stuff in Virginia Health Foods on Dolphin Street. Mm -hmm. um, it went from a little box to a full shelf over the past three years. And then um, and then I'm in Locks of Soul. And then within the the end of the first year, I'm in a master barber in Detroit, Michigan. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> like so, out. he's, wow. yeah. Um, so, over the years, it's, it's been, it's doing, you know, pretty good. I have my ups and downs, like any business, but it's, what inspired me is myself. Mm. I inspired my own self to go out because for the longest, I always wanted to be in this box of me like like yeah no you know my my stuff not doing this no i was not doing that and then i sat down and i was like i really don't need any inspiration from anybody else with all that hard work that i'm seeing um and i'm in stores and stuff within my first year on my own inspiration mm -hmm. so that's i kind of my mom and my aunt forced me to do something and then once i started seeing results about my products and everything being in stores and they're selling my product has been in Virginia for the past three years. And like I said, I went from a little box, you know, area to like a full shelf. Not a little bitty shelf, like a nice, long little shelf. And uh, for my product to be doing so well in there, it kind of just makes me want to continue and see what else I can do in the next couple of years. Yeah. I, I like that. Yeah, it's, I, I can't even imagine that feeling. Uh, yeah. Finding out someone states away yeah. You know, has a whole uh, setup. You yeah, know, it's mostly like my beard oil. I make them. Uh, I make beard oil, mm. and it's funny because I had a guy uh, for my Just last event. My yeah, <laughs> I have a guy from my last event. It was like a woman making beard oil, and I was like, he was like, you don't even have a beard. Like, how do you make beard oil? And uh, I told him, I said, uh, my boyfriend. Uh, he had patches. He wanted to clear up his patches and stuff. I sat down. I did my research. I mashed some oils together. Uh, the first one didn't do too well, of course, just trial and error. I'm a scientist. And then once I found something that worked, I kind of just threw it up in the air. And that's when my friend Malcolm gave it a try. And up. Malcolm Beard went from nothing to like a full blown. Like he has to keep he it does. cut. He does. He has to keep it cut. So. With him Shout doing that, Banks. yeah, that's my buddy. Hey, Malcolm. But uh, with him doing that, and he put it out there, I got more people, and uh, I'm an alumni from a &M, so I threw it, I threw it on, you know, our band website, and uh, the band director, the current band director, used it, and when she started using it, the guy from Detroit was like, "Hey, let me try it out." I sent him uh, a few sample bottles, and ever since then. You know, he calls me every now and then to just, cause he doesn't, he sells some of it, but the, uh, but he mostly just uses it on his clients to mm -hmm. force them to buy it from me. There you go, that's the best kind of advertising. <clears throat> so it's, it's a blessing, it's crazy. I, man, I'm shipping everywhere. I didn't even know I was gonna ship places. <laughs> Something that I like that you mentioned is you used what you had in terms of networking. Yeah. You know, you use people you knew. Yeah. And that expands. So networking does work for anybody who's listening. Yeah. You just have to find the, those one or two good friends. Yeah. And once those you find are. those one or two good friends, man, you, you, you in there. And they always give you different things to do and mm -hmm. different directions to go. And, you know, just give it a try. I always tell people, just give it a try. Love it. Love it. <laughs> All right. So my next question is going to kind of 
refer to those three years when you first started. Okay. Like, what obstacles did you encounter along the way to get to this point? Oh my God, financial. <laughs> um, time management. Um, yeah, it's, I'm not there yet. Believe me, I don't think nobody ever gonna work out time perfectly. But uh, financial ability, time, uh, hearing the no word a lot. Ooh. Yeah, Talk that's, about that a little bit for me. Yeah, so when I was trying to get my stuff in stores and everything like that, um, Mobile, Alabama is a different place. And you have to know people to do certain things in Mobile. Um, but when I tried to go to get my products in different places, people always tell me, no, we don't have space. No, we don't, can't do that. Um, um, do your business have a license? I say, man, I have my EIN number, I got my trademark, I got like my business license for the city and the county. Mm. I don't know what else y'all need. I, I even got an LLC. So when they still had that, they said they basically was like, we still can't qualify you into our store at the time. Basically, another note. Mm -hmm. um, Next question. <laughs> And this kind of goes back to um, the time management statement we made earlier. Um, how do you manage to work, manage your work life and your personal life? Okay, I've gotten better. <laughs> when I first started my business, I was working with the animal control, like I was telling you. Mm -hmm. And I was working probably about 50, 60 hours a week, then trying to do business on the side and everything. But now that I stopped that, I kind of became a bartender. I've learned how to time management a whole lot better. So I'm gonna just give you a week, for instance, okay? I'm off Monday and Tuesday. I'm gonna just say, like today, I'm off, I'll just pass out this Monday and it's Tuesday. Monday, I cleaned up my house, I cooked dinner and everything. Uh, I had a few meetings. Tuesday, uh, which is today, I'm doing the broadcast with you. I make some. I made some products earlier. I took care of my garden, and then my Tuesday is my date night. Aww. So every Tuesday is date night with my boyfriend. Every Tuesday, that's in the house or whatever. Uh, that's mainly why I don't work Tuesday on either job because mm. I feel like he needs time. Like everybody else is getting my time. Facts. Uh, then like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We do that. I all work nights. So during the day, I can make products and stuff, and some of my products kind of continue on to like the next day. Uh, and then I like the soap instantly. I can make my soap on Wednesday and I can cut it on Friday. Uh, soap takes about two hours. And then, so I wake up in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning. I take care of my dog by nine o'clock, 9.30. Uh, by 10 to 11, I'll sit down and make soap, then I'll go live while I'm doing it. Let that cure, take a shower, take a nap by one o'clock, and then I wake up by two or three to get ready to go to work. Wow. Uh, so, it sounds like you got it. I got it now, yeah. It, yeah. Sounds, it sounds like you got, I got it. it. I got it now. Uh, it's all about, that's why I said like earlier in my business career, I did not know what to do and how to figure out time management. But once you do something so many times and so long, uh, it's just uh, a repeat. You just keep doing stuff until you figure it out. Um, when I work nights, so or like Eva, or either if I work a day bartending somewhere, uh, I work that day shift bartending. I make some products, and I spend some time with my friends and my family. Uh, it's just time management. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like I don't, I don't. When I tell people I really don't have enough time to like do things, you know, out the blue or whatever. Uh, I, I like to know things up front. I have a planner that stays in my Ooh. book, yes. and with that planner, it keeps me organized, and I can show you times and stuff like that when I'm supposed to do this and that. I have one myself. Yeah. Uh, my girlfriend bought mine mm -hmm. because I was horrible with it. Yeah. Still am, I'm gonna be honest. I'm still pretty bad too. Uh, but like I have to look I, I look every Monday <laughs> just to see what I have to do throughout the week. It's to a point where I now um, I purchased uh dry erase uh stickies. Yeah. And uh, I have a a wall mm -hmm. in my my bedroom 
and one kind of in the kitchen hallway. And uh, that way, anything pertinent, like if I'm on the phone, yeah. drop a dry erase marker, put it up there, I have to constantly see it. Yeah. And uh, that helps me a lot. That's, yeah. I'm, I'm still in the learning of uh, implementing things. So you, you just have to find out what works for you. Right. Like right now, I have a dry erase board, and it has products for me to make and stuff I need to buy and stuff like that. Like it's categorized. Right. It doesn't look like it's categorized to anybody. But you understand. But I know what's going That's on. That's yeah. And uh, it's, I always tell people, I said, I, I'm a visual learner and I look at things visibly. Right. So if I don't see it, that's why I can't put dates and stuff in my phone because I don't, I might go on my phone to post some social media stuff with my business or with me, you know, my weight loss or anything like that. But then that's about it. That's literally about it. And I check my bank out, make sure I ain't over traveling. <laughs> <laughs> Just real. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm in that boat. Yeah, see? <laughs> Make sure I'm good. I'm good. All right. All right. You know? And uh, it's just, you just have to plan things. I love my planner. I, I bought yeah. it about three months ago. And shout like, out to dry erase boards. Shout out to dry erase board planners and sticky notes. And sticky notes. <laughs> yes. yes, very sticky much. Sticky so. notes is like the best thing. I love sticky notes. Cool. So that leads me to a little bit more of a personal question. Okay. Uh, over these years, has there been one memory that stands out to be the most memorable over all of them? Like just one that just stands out to you? Oh my God, yeah, I was a little girl. And uh, her name is Heaven. I don't know That's if she's, adorable. I don't, know if she's, I don't know if she's hearing this, but uh, <laughs> I met her and her mom when we were in Sister to Sister. And um, she was, she's not little, little. She's like 12. She's little to me, but yeah. she's 12. And uh, she, her mom was like, oh my God. Well, she told her mom, oh my God, I want a bath bomb. I want this, I want that. <laughs> and uh, her mom got a bath bomb being scared that it's going to break her child out because she has, you know, a whole bunch of skin, you know, irritations. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to just give her one. I'm going to just give you this bath bomb. Unless you try it out. And um, the little girl, she was so excited. Her mom did buy some products anyway. And, you know, her mom already supporting the business for myself. And then I was like, you know what? You know, just cook. Take what that bath bomb you want. All right? And when I see you next year, let me know how the bath bombs work. This little girl sent me an email. Wow. About the bath bomb saying how much she loved it. How much it didn't break her skin out. Wow. And it's, it had glitter in it. And it smells like... Fruit Loops and Skittles, and then it was like it was a sweet smell. And uh, she was like, I told my mom, like she put, she no, she put at the end. I told my mom to buy some more bath bombs, and she said, I love you so much. Continue to do what you do because you are actually helping a lot of people like me to actually enjoy stuff that I couldn't enjoy before. Oh, and oh my God, dude, I cried. I was about to say, did it tug your heart Oh my, my goodness, it it. It, I cry like a little. I'm tearing up now because I, it's, it's, you know how you do stuff and you really don't think about it until it touched somebody else. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, this this little girl, she made my heart sink. And when I saw her again, I, I didn't even take a picture with her. I was just so excited to see her. And when I saw her again, you know, her mom wanted um, it was around Easter, mm -hmm. so she wanted some Easter, you know, stuff for Easter. So I made her some little golden egg bath bombs, and I sit there and I paint them all on gold. Oh, yeah. And uh, her mom took a picture of it and sent it to me. And it was like her whole bathroom was like gold, and she was just like loving it. I didn't post the picture because you know my the child, you of know. Course. But it was, oh, I'm crying now. It's, I see it. I see um, it. I wasn't gonna say nothing. No, nah, it's, it's nothing. just it's crazy because it's when I tell y'all this stuff really mind blown. It mind blows me all the time. And that little girl, junior. yeah, I guess. <laughs> no, it, it does, it does. It and does. that little girl, she really touched my heart when she wrote that email. I posted the email on social media if anybody want to read it. Um, but it's, it's crazy. I was like, man, like this little girl had psoriasis. She had um, psoriasis and she, had, she was breaking out, you know, like under her arm and stuff like that. She didn't even do anything to her. Oh man. 
So she um, got the opportunity to enjoy that experience. She got the opp- my thing is that she had the opportunity to enjoy an experience that she thought she would never enjoy because she has certain skin, you know, skin issues. And for her to have that experience, like, and to make her feel like she's like everybody else, because you know, at that age, they want to they want to mm-hmm. feel like they're everybody else. And for her to make her feel like she's like, oh, yeah, I use the bath bomb and this and that. And her friend's like, I thought you couldn't use, I want to see the conversation. Right. I thought she couldn't use the bath bomb. She's like, I got that money by any. I can see yeah, her, yeah, her yeah. attitude. And uh, she's, and now, and to this day, her, her mom still buys bath bombs every now and then just for it, just keep her happy. It's crazy. I, man, it, you have no idea. Like, I saw the irritation on her skin. And she had like a little dress on and mm-hmm. you know, her mom was showing me her whole back was broke out and everything. And uh Salute yeah. to you, man. Salute yeah, to you. yeah. To you, man. That is that that blew my mind. Oh gosh. I'm good. It's okay. It's okay. You need to take a second. It's perfectly fine. Nah, no, nah, I'm good. I'm I'm actually used to this because that question is designed to evoke that emotion. So that's yeah. why I'm used to it. I'm completely used oh, to it. Oh gosh, that little girl touch my heart. Awesome. Now, my next question is going to be the inverse of that film. Okay. Okay. So, was there at any point within these years that you feel that you wouldn't be successful? And if so, who or what changed your mind? Um, yes. So, I felt like I wasn't feeling that I was, I was going to be successful because. You know, I go months and months without people buying anything, and I just got stuff sitting on the shelf or whatever. Oh, uh, not months and months, but like a month, you know, weeks to a month. My eyes still tear off the little girl. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I still go, and I'd be like, man, like, I don't even know if it's worth it. Like, I'm spending so much time and so much dedication to, you know, something that I, I see. Mm-hmm. I see it, you know. And, Cause there's people that buy stuff that's made for sensitive skin, and they're really not. They still people still have just issues. Just mm-hmm. Correct, and people still have issues with it. And um, but it's every time I, no lie, I'm looking you eyes because this is like no lie. Every time I feel that way, I have one of my customers post a picture of a like a before and after, mm-hmm. or they'll write like a little testimony or a review. But every time I feel that way, that always happens. So, I guess I guess my customers keep me going. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's um, cause it, every single time I like, man, I haven't had a purchase in about two weeks. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how things doing in the stores. You know, cause I haven't had a chance to go up there. <laughs> and uh, I sit down and I try to throw a little sale on or something. And every single time, I feel like this is not gonna work, and I feel like I should just quit. I have, of course I have people around me telling me don't do it, but once your mind is already stuck in that position, it's kind of hard to get it unstuck. But every single time I, I have that feeling, somebody posts a before and after or a little testimony or something like that. So what keeps me going is my customers. When they tell me how things are doing and how their skin is reacting and how it's clearing up certain, certain issues Our next question, and this is my uh, second to favorite question. Oh, so I call this the long term question. All right. So, where would you like to see yourself and your brain in one year, in three years, and then in 10 years? I can't even think of the next three months. Um, <laughs> but, <Do I've>, best. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, I prepared this question. I just you still crying. Bless your heart. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a little girl, y'all. I have no idea. Um, so, in a year, I see myself going full time with my business and giving it my own. Um, I would like to be in another store. Um, if not in another store, I would like to work with some hotels. Mm. And see if I can get my products in some hotels. About that. Um, because I can't even use the products in the hotels that say sensitive skin. 
I'm just being, I don't know if anybody else have these issues. You're not by yourself. But um, I can't even, you know, use this stuff. So, and then in the next three years, I want to be very well known uh, when it comes to online purchases. I want to be able to make a certain amount of sales in online. And in three years, I also would like to be um, in one of in some of the bigger stores like, uh, like Target or I wouldn't say Whole Foods, but I, I, I want to direct my target towards people who have lower income. Mm. And when I say that, I know it's a high quality product and I know it's gonna cost something, but it's a lot of people, that's, a lot of people with lower quality income have more issues with their skin than the people, because when people with money, they can treat their skin. They go to a doctor, get little needles in them and stuff like that. But when you have people like me and you, that's just working day to day jobs, just trying to make it, those people don't tend to have, um, financials to actually do what they need for their skin to take care of themselves um, so when I say I would like to be in stores not like Walmart but more like on a line of like Target or um, um, I would love to be in Bath and Body Works that would be good one. to actually have my own brand there but I don't know how they would work with them already having a brand or if not just have my own store I never actually thought about having my own mm. store I just love to sell online and ship out to cool places. <laughs> I guess I'm still in that era. Um, in 10 years, um, 10 years, I would like to um, be able to actually start a foundation with people who uh, have sensitive skins to actually help them out that have skin issues. What I mean by that, I want to be able, like right now, uh, me and my friend Reggie Hill, we did a homeless project last year. And I gave all of my products, like uh, I made some lotions and um, I made some soap because they're, the, so, uh, they're able to take showers in certain places. Mm -hmm. uh, I would love to do a homeless project. That's always been in my heart to do. A homeless project and a scholarship program. That's me. And uh, with the homeless project is, I understand that some people that are homeless, they, they kind of don't help, they, they can't help it, or they might have a disability and the disability ran out, the check ran out, and they end up putting on the street or anything. But those people themselves have sensitive skin, skin as well. Mm -hmm. So why not start something to try to help them out so they can be able to take a shower or, or to be able to help their skin just like anybody else can. It was me, my friend Reggie, and about about four or five kids from um, high school. Mm -hmm. And I packed like toiletry, wipes, um, socks, mm -hmm. um, some some goods. And we kind of just, and of course a lot of my products, like I put some soaps in there, some body butters, uh, had some lotions in there, and I had some other type of cream. I can't think of what I, I put a lot of stuff in there. So I had backpacks, we had, I can only afford six. Six backpacks, six or seven backpacks. And we went up and down downtown and passed out the backpacks and homes. And with that experience, uh, it was one experience, it's another experience that I, I kind of enjoy. It was, a, it was a guy. And we gave the backpack to him. And when we gave the backpack to him, he asked for money. I had no money, nobody else had no money. This little fort, well, I don't know how old high school kids anymore, but <laughs> this high school kid, he gave, he pulled out five dollars that his mama just gave him and gave it to that man. Wow. No lie. I got a video. Me and my friend, my boyfriend walked around with a video and recorded everything. And he gave me all the clips I had to edit. Oh my God. Uh -huh. But when I saw that happen and it touched that one kid, that kid is now at state. He graduated. He was one of the least people to graduate. Wow. They didn't believe he was going to graduate. And to this day, I, I met with my friend Reggie and he told me that um, this, this kid still talk about that one day experience. So if I can have that, 
experience every year and is just able to at least touch one child to turn their life around, can you imagine just what we can do as a whole if it was in every state? sending the home, I was like, man, I really want to do another homeless project. I love doing homeless projects. I love it. Because it's been able to help somebody who can't help themselves. Right. And um, when I did that, did the backpacks, and I gave it, and I saw that kid get $5 out of his own pocket, that, that to me, that's unbelievable. Right. And now that kid is at state, and he, and guess what he's studying? What? Politics. <laughs> Shout out to you. If you're listening to this, I don't I don't know your name, but if you're listening to this, please. I don't, I don't me. even know the kid's <laughs> name, but because please, yeah. I just met the kid that day. Man. But now he's studying that's, politics. That's incredible. That's incredible. And so it's when I say it's stuff like that, like in ten years when you ask that question, mm-hmm. I don't know how I'm gonna get there, but that's what I see. All right, that's that's uh, that's the purpose of a dream anyway. Yeah. It's not yeah. about. Uh, how you get there is the fact that you make it. Yeah. All right, cool. So, like I said, this brings me to my final question, my wrap-up question, which is uh, my absolute favorite because this is the question I dedicate to the person that's listening who may have an idea, but they're afraid to act on it, and you're proof of that, you know, in the future. So, what words of encouragement would you have for someone who's just starting on their own? Keep trying. Don't listen to the word no. <laughs> Each time you hear the word no, you keep trying to do something else. Just keep going. Uh, go, with, go what's in your heart. And you would know that it's in your heart. You would know when it's there. Um, don't be afraid to try new things. If something don't work out, you can take that same thing and reflip it until it becomes what you want. And also, don't let financial burden be your excuse. Because um, financially, it's hard. It was hard trying to get up. You should have saw me trying to get that money for that trade one. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's hard, you know. But once you build a certain platform, you, you can be the only way you can go is up. No matter how far down you think you are, you can only go up. But you keep believing yourself and always stay confident to who you are. Uh, I'm just telling you these are these are the things that I did to help with myself. Right. Because um, financially, sticking to to myself, learn how to time manage. <laughs> That was that one's that's a personal one. And uh yeah, it is. Learn how to time manage. But if anybody say you can't do it, I, I used to hear that all the time. People were like, Oh, when somebody told me I can't do it, I did it. You know what I'm saying? And I really didn't believe it. I was like, you know, I'm throwing over the breast on my shoulder. You know, whatever, whatever. But it's it's true. Because yeah. there's gonna be a lot of people that tell you you can't do this, you mm-hmm. can't be that, you can't your your product is like everybody else, but they're not. You do everything else, you do the same thing, you do this, you do that, but it's not. I'm having results, you know what I'm saying? So, I always tell people, stay true to yourself. You know when to move when you feel it. Don't move without having a back, though. <laughs> don't just up and quit your job and, and you know, you don't have anything to fall back on. Um, but it's, and take, take your guilt. And you will know when your gift is when you see it. Um, just, and just, I keep telling people this, don't take no for an answer. You want to hear a lot of no's, man. You want to hear at least 35 no's and two yeses. <laughs> <laughs> I have that ratio of Rob Yeah. <laughs> so it's, um, but that's, I don't know. It's just, gotcha. but that's what I've learned for myself over the past couple of years. Uh, when I, I have a, a, a saying for my business, it would be confident in your skin. And, and a lot of people call that.
say that like um they they say I inspire them. That was for me that was weird. I don't inspire nobody. You know what I'm saying? But apparently I did, because when I have to be confident in your skin, I'm not just talking about, you know, just your skin itself. I'm talking about your mental, talking about the way you move, the way you the way you talk, the way you set up for your posters, just be confident in who you are and don't let nobody else change who you are. And when I say be confident in your skin, that's exactly what I mean. Talking first and then. Have me talking about crap first. <laughs> That's how you have to do it.